Father, we ask that you bless all your servants who gather the people's monetary gifts as we freely and willingly offer them up to you. May these gifts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Amen.
both those versions clarify that figure. And of course, then we know Peter, the one, the vocal one, above all the rest, outspoken, emphasizes that he does not like it and simply cannot bear that thought. So what does he do? He begins to rebuke, the Bible tells us, rebuke Jesus. Now rebuke is a very, very strong word. In fact, it's normally applied to an exorcist's control over a demon. So it almost sounds as though at first, like Peter is treating Jesus as a man possessed by a demon. For this reason, Jesus turns around and rebukes Peter. In fact, Jesus even called Peter what? Right. Wow. How harsh can we get? This brief exchange of discourse between Peter and Jesus is uncommonly powerful. We realize, though, that Peter was thinking of himself. We would have too, right? Missing Jesus. If we know of a person in our family and we know they're not going to live long, we would know we're going to miss them, right? So we're kind of being a little bit selfish, right? We don't want to bear the thought of losing them. Peter didn't want to bear the thought of being without Jesus from day to day, talking, walking with him, learning from him. In Mark's gospel, Mark's relating, though here, also to his own community of the true nature of Jesus' messiahship, that Jesus is no popular hero by any means, or even a glorious miracle worker, but rather Jesus is the one whose role is disclosed only in his suffering and his most horrific and painful death. We know all too well that discipleship following Jesus implies a willingness to go the way of the cross, to expect suffering and not glory and power. Mark's concept of discipleship severs to refute any view which reckons only on a glorious, miracle-filled life in the kingdom here and now. Jesus said to pick up our cross and follow him if we love him. To pick up one's cross, to follow Jesus means living a life of self-discipline, self-denial. It means simply to think of others first before we think of what we want or what we'd rather do ourselves. It means that only in the abandonment of all worldly security and prior claims of the self can true life be found. In other words, only in giving there is receiving. We know that, but don't we? That's not anything new we're learning today, but that is it. When we give, when we do, when we go out of our way for others, do something extra for them, in a way, it's a little bit selfish too because we feel good about ourselves, then, don't we? The same point is raised in the question then about profit. Profit there in gaining the whole world while losing life or about what a man can give in return for his life. Verse 37, life that is devoid of meaning cannot be reclaimed by the possession of all the goods of the world. Nothing can replace a sense of purpose and destiny in life. Discipleship bestows that sense and only in the rejection or the surrender of all other claims can life be filled then with meaning or purpose. While all that might seem kind of gloomy or dismal, we need to remember that always there is a bright side to everything. Although sometimes it takes quite a bit of our thinking to find that bright side in things, doesn't it? There's a little 
story that illustrates how Christ can and will change the crosses in our life and uh, that we bear and turn them into victories. It involves a woman who was a house mother at a small southeastern college. The woman was crippled and she had all she could do to use only one hand. Each morning, one of the girls had to come and help her even get dressed. Then one day, one of the girls got brave and she asked the question to the house mother, isn't it hard for you to have to undergo this suffering? And what the house mother replied is pretty significant. Years ago, it was, but today I consider it a blessing. In giving this cross over to God, he has enriched my life immeasurably. Amen. Through this cross that I bear, I have come to know God in a much deeper sense in a way I didn't know or experience before. Not before I suffered this affliction. Through this cross that I bear, I have come to become even closer in contact with people I meet, things I share with people. I wasn't that way before, before I had this affliction. So please, don't feel sorry for me. God has turned my cross into a victory. <clears throat> now you and I, we know we don't have to go through life looking for crosses to bear, do we? Because crosses have a way of coming to us whether we like them or not. Sometimes we have to go through a really deep valley and it seems like, oh my goodness, cross on top of cross is coming our way, right? And when our Lord says to pick up our cross and follow him, what he means is this. It is in giving our crosses over to him that it will make a difference. I'm going to repeat that. It is in giving our crosses over to him. And sometimes we really need to remember that, don't we? And that will make the difference. He can and will change our crosses into victories. The trouble is this, the illusion in the world today, right? Life should be a bowl of cherries. Yeah. We shouldn't have to suffer. We shouldn't have pain. Let's find the easy way up, right? Yeah. No, and the right way out. <laughs> yes, right. But what is the right way? God. Okay, so whatever that entails, right? to go through it, bear with them in God's timing. If we have a marriage problem, psychiatry should be able to help us, shouldn't it? If we have a physical problem, medicine or doctors should be able to come through with a breakthrough for us. If we have economic problems, then somehow the government should be able to help us. <laughs> well, okay, that wasn't meant to be a joke, but <laughs> if we have a vocational problem, then somehow the schools should be able to help us. If we're dissatisfied, unhappy, or depressed, then somehow, some kind of drugs, some kind of medicine, some kind of entertainment, some counseling, or maybe just something new should be able to help us. But the witness of Christianity is this. That is not so. The fact is there is suffering in this earthly life and we can't escape it. When we think about it, what is the main symbol of the Christian faith? Cross. Bingo. The cross, a reminder of our suffering, of brokenness, of pain, 
also a redemption, right? Yes. Jesus, our Lord, did not drive off in the sunset in a big, fancy, schmancy car, did he? <laughs> no, he was plastered. He was nailed to a tree by the whole world. Wow. For what? Hallelujah. It, For us. Yes, it is not that suffering will never take place, but rather that our suffering will be elevated. It will be ennobled. It will be sanctified. by. It will yes. be given meaning. It will be given direction. It will be given purpose. And it will be given the grace Hallelujah. from God Amen. from his love. The woman admitted to that girl at first that she was bitter. But as she gave her cross over to Christ, her life had been elevated. Amen. Her suffering had been given meaning. Her life was given purpose. And her heart was given joy and Amen. peace. Amen. Yes. Especially during this season of Lent, this being the second week of Lent. We can turn whatever sacrifices we might be making during Lent, yes. right? such as giving up something we enjoy. We might want to give up some afflictions that we might be experiencing or feeling we're experiencing Amen. them. Or doing something extra like going out of our way to help someone. Turning those good spiritual habits into positive thoughts, maybe reading the Bible more, right? Yes, amen. Doing more devotionals. Amen. Meditating more. But we can turn those negative thoughts into positive things and not think so much about the non-spiritual things in our life. Just like afflictions, afflictions can turn into blessings, we can always strive to make something positive out of what might otherwise appear to be something negative. In the Bible, it tells us, you know, when you uh, sacrifice, um, you know, and, and you wear the sackcloth and the ashes and all, you know, don't go around with a gloomy face and look, you know, oh, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea mea culpa, you know, no. You're supposed to still be cheerful. Go out of your way to Amen. be nice. Because why? God promises to be with us, doesn't he? The same as he always was there with his disciples. The same as he was in ages past. The same as he is in our present lives. And the same as we know with our hope and our faith that he will be there in the future. When we make promises to our children or to anyone, we do so with our best interest to keep them. In that way, we strive to prove our honesty and our reliability. And people respect that the same as we respect people who keep to their word. How many times these days, I know a lot of the young ones are that, but I don't mean to come down on the young ones because it's people in general too. Oh yeah, I'll take care of that. I'll send you that tomorrow. Yep, I'll do that for you. Yep, I'll see you tomorrow. You know, and I'll, do they? For whatever reason, right? We don't know. But the point was, we were at first on our mind when they said something, was it? We were thinking of ourselves first, rather than putting them first, which is what we told them we would do. There's so many books out there on the promises of God. There's the scholars debate that topic all the time, don't they, Pastor? How many promises are there, right? How many books are there? But most scholars agree there's at least over 100, right? We're not going to name all those today. <laughs> Psalm 145, 13, NRSB, reminds us that the Lord is faithful to his words. Amen. And gracious in all his deeds. Yes. Or when we read the NIV version, the Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. So let's just think for a moment just of a few situations of promises that God made. Abraham, 99 years old, right? Ikaw ang liwanag sa madilim na daan Ikaw 
Kinabong siyang tanda ko sa aking kinabukasan Ikaw ang bumabay sa aming pag-aaral Kahit hirap sa buhay, ikaw ay nakaalala Jesus Christ, love and care ministry Kahit di ka nakikita, I always know your love for me Handang tumulong sa mga nangangilangan Sa iyong gabay, kami ay may natutunan Napakabuti ng inyong mga puso Sa mga tulong nyo, meron yung balik sa dulo Laki ng aming pasasalamat Laging dasalang malayo sa kahirapan Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi Magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Sa bawat pag-ising mo pagtulog Sa katauhan namin ikaw ang humubog Mga pangaral at salita mo sa amin ay tumatak Tinuring mo kami sa mundo na isang anak Di mo pinabayaan sa oras ng kahirapan Binusuping may kagutuman na nararanasan Ikaw ang tanging ina namin kanuman Diyos na ang bahalang magbalik sa iyong kabaitan Mga pangaral mo ang nagsilbi sa aming aral Nagbigay lapis at papel gumuguhit na parang anghel Nagpatayo ng simbahan Kung saan pwede naming masilungan Maging takuhan Ito'y binabalot ng kadiliman Salita ng Panginoon to ni Nanila Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso Sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso Sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami sa luto Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami sa luto Jesus Christ, love and your ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami sa luto